What you're about to see is the inside of the neurosciences program, the brainchild of a brilliant neurosurgeon named Dr. Joseph Ransahoff. This program, founded in 1989, is a combined effort of the Hospital for Joint Diseases and New York University Medical Center, where Dr. Ransahoff has served as chairman of neurosurgery. I've been a neurosurgeon for over 40 years. I've always had an interest in the treatment of epilepsy, pain, and movement disorders. But the establishment of this program has been made possible by the recent explosion in neuroimaging, in biotechnology, and the application of the computer sciences to the nervous system. The results of surgery today are something which we couldn't have dreamed of a decade ago. And this program is one of which we are very proud, and the results which you will see, I think, will attest to the expertise and the interest of all the physicians involved. The department, like the hospital, is on the cutting edge of medicine, treating people plagued by diseases like Parkinson's and epilepsy, and giving them hope and help towards more normal lives. The diagnosis of a brain disorder can be a lifetime sentence for its victims. If I got active like 10 times a day, most likely I would get 10 seizures a day. It really wasn't worth living, really. He's doing nothing. Epilepsy sufferers number in the millions. It is a debilitating disease that causes its victims to seize and lose consciousness due to abnormal brain activity. There is no cure for the illness yet, only control of its devastating symptoms. Okay, now turn your palms up so they face towards the ceiling and then turn your head from side to side. At our program, we treat people with a variety of seizure disorders that have been difficult to control with standard medications. In some of these people, we use investigational drugs, and for those who remain refractory to standard anti-epileptic or investigational drugs, there's an epilepsy surgery program which can be very effective in selected cases. One of the problems that you've been having with the medicines is that they seem to work either too little or too much. Parkinson's disease, another neurological disorder, afflicts three-quarters of a million Americans. It begins with a simple tremor and gradually develops into total muscle rigidity. The hope is that a balance of medication will ease the burden for the patient. The doctors here begin by eliminating all the previous medication in the patient and starting from scratch. Uh, this patient here, Carol, has done pretty well for the last, uh, I'd say, for the first five years and then over the last two or three years she's had more uh, difficulty. She manifests what we call square wave dyskinesias uh, where the medicines either don't work at all or they work suddenly with these uncontrolled involuntary movements. I am so very optimistic. I don't let things like that bother me. I try to see, think everything will be fine. I'm not, um, I'm not um, saying that nothing bad could happen. There's always that possibility. The neurophysiology department houses an elaborate monitoring system for cases that confound the doctors. These nerve conduction studies, known as EMG, can locate nerve damage in patients with orthopedic or neurologic disorders and may even avert exploratory surgery. EMG is usually ordered when you have a problem with the peripheral nerves, when you have a weakness or you have pain or you have some kind of fatigue syndrome, uh, in which case there is a question if there is a nerve or muscle disorder. This innovative testing equipment, known as EEG, enables the doctors to monitor the actual brain waves of their patients and videotape the results. This patient is having an epileptic seizure. The monitor has helped us to pinpoint the exact area of the brain from which the seizure began. These brain monitoring studies are used around the clock for an average of seven days straight on some people with epilepsy to help us better understand their seizures and to help us demystify their illness. Susie, can you look at me? These striking results provide the doctors here at the Hospital for Joint Diseases more sophisticated information than ever about the causes and frequency of the symptoms of brain disease. When it comes to the next step, there is very little guesswork. Are you hopeful that this is a, a new beginning for you? Yes, Mr. Yes, very hopeful. Carol will have her last pet, a high-tech MRI before undergoing surgery, brain surgery. Now we're going to go take some pictures. In many ways, this is the end of the road, a road scarred by years of failed pharmaceutical intervention and medical technique. 
No one wants to undergo brain surgery, of course. It is the road less traveled. But through the genius and dedication of the doctors here, and the generosity of this hospital's supporters, the road is less treacherous now, and may even be promising. The people who wind up here have suffered symptoms or pain so severe that everyday living has become an agonizing defeat. Can you see okay now? Because we want you to be able to see. All right? Nothing's in your face? Okay, good. Carol was frozen, trapped inside her own body because of Parkinson's disease. The activities that most of us take for granted, like walking or feeding ourselves, she couldn't perform. The Hospital for Joint Diseases offers its patients a way out. Okay, watch and see if you have any light. No light. Okay. The patient is awake, incredibly. Good. The surgeon needs her responses as he attempts to interrupt the circuit in her brain that is malfunctioning or preventing her from moving normally. There is little room for error. The risk could be blindness or paralysis. You feel better. Your toes feel better already? Yes, they do. Okay. The surgery went very well, and uh, her results certainly looked very encouraging. Uh, she's had a marked decrease in the rigidity of her right side, and in general, uh, within 24 hours, we see that change to an even greater extent. So I would expect by tomorrow, her right side would be quite fluid in its movement. This operation was first tried in the 1950s. For the surgeons, it was like closing their eyes, shooting a gun, and hoping to hit the target. Most of the time it failed. The Hospital for Joint Diseases is the very first in this country to perform this surgery on Parkinson's patients. It meant the world in January 1992 to this man. I want to be operated on a second time for them to operate on the right side, which will take care of the left part of my body. Since then, more than 20 patients have been operated on for Parkinson's, and in a careful system of tracking them, the hospital reports a promising rate of success. In surgery for epilepsy, the patient is also awake. The surgeon identifies the part of his brain where the seizures originate and will actually remove that part once he is certain no other bodily functions will be impaired. I, I wasn't scared at all. I would have done anything as long as I would have got a normal life again. The Hospital for Joint Diseases boasts a high rate of success for these patients. 90% show marked reduction or total elimination of seizures. We are interested in movement disorders and Parkinson's in particular. Uh, there's a lot of research to be done on the brain, what's causing uh, the Parkinson's. And this presents an opportunity for us to actually investigate and do some major research into this field. The neurosciences program here is involved in another breakthrough. The reduction of pain by the surgical implantation of a stimulation device into the body, which delivers small amounts of electricity that help block pain signals to the brain. The doctors and staff at the Hospital for Joint Diseases have made it their life's work to help people like Andrew and Carol who are tortured by brain disorders. They deserve our praise and our thanks.